I had someone share something with me and it, it has stuck. And I want to share it with you because it helped me. And so I hope that it does the same for you. So how many times do you guys go and be starving and be having these cravings, you know, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Popeyes, whatever. We're just going to use Chick-fil-A. And you pull up the Chick-fil-A. First of all, you drive to Chick-fil-A. You, you got to drive to the suburbs because they don't, they don't put Chick-fil-A in the hood for real. You know, so you have to drive maybe 15 minutes sometimes, you know, um, to the Chick-fil-A. And then when you get there, the line is wrapped two or three times around the store. So you have to wait in the line for 15 minutes just to place your order. Then you get up there to place your order and you have to wait for like 10 or 15 more minutes to actually get to the window. And then you get to the window and they come out. You've already paid and everything. The price has been paid. They come out and they hand you your food. How many times does that happen and y'all roll up the window and press the gas and hit it like Professor Ogilvy? Stop! And then drop all the way back home hungry. You spent all that time and energy and effort because you was hungry and you was having cravings. And you went and you left without getting what you came for. God says that this is how we do him. When we wait all day, he waits all day sometimes for some of us to talk to him because, you know, we have it planned to do it in the morning, but we forgot and it took too long and we was real tired because we stayed up late last night. We should have never had that last shot. Okay. And so you get up in the morning and you completely forget to do your devotional or you do it and then you fall asleep on it, but then you wake up and then you're, now you're rushing to get to work or whatever you had to do, all of that. Okay. When, when we do that, and God is just waiting for us to come and talk to him. He's waiting on us to come and spend time with him. He's waiting on us to commune with him. And so we do. After we done did everything else our whole day, we come and we finally get to a point where we've been waiting all day. God's been waiting all day. And we come and we pray to God and we're we're casting all our cares at his feet. And we're laying our burdens down. And we are letting go and letting God. All of that. Okay. We get down there. We say a good prayer for a good two minutes. Okay. And then after we're done with our prayer, we just get up. We just leave hungry. We leave without hearing from God. We leave without getting what we came for. We leave without getting fed. We got to stop doing that. God is saying just when he was ready to feed you, just when he was getting ready to open up the heavens and pour out a blessing that you could not receive, just when he was getting ready to bless you abundantly, just when he was getting ready to give you that house, that car, those kids, that husband, that job, just when he was getting ready to open up heaven for you, you pulled off. You left. You got out of his presence. You got out of his will. You got out of his favor. Ooh. You got out of his grace. God is saying, come back. Don't leave without getting what you came for. So if this sounds familiar to you, go back. God is not concerned with how many times you've messed up. He's not concerned with how many times you pulled up and made an order and pulled off and they've had to. Now what am I going to do with this? They pulled up. They asked me for what they wanted. They made it a special order. I can't just give this to anybody. I made this specific for their purpose. God is saying, come back. <laughs> come back. I got all this stuff. I didn't throw away your orders. I didn't throw away all that stuff you asked me for. I didn't trash it. I didn't get rid of it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to give it to you. So go back. And don't leave without getting what you came for.